Here are the three main takeaways from each state in the state election results that we've seen today, where the BJP walked away with the three big states and Congress walked away with Telangana. Here is what we have learned and how it will impact 2024. Here's some perspective. Let's start with Rajasthan. The BJP walking away with Rajasthan, a total of 112 leads when I was recording this video. Congress at about 71, a big blow for the Congress. Here are the big three takeaways. One, Congress lost because of anti-incumbency against the Gelot government and infighting between Ashok Gelot and Sachin Pilot. Some people who were tracking the actual uh, campaign on the ground said Sachin Pilot's supporters actually voted against the Congress because they wanted to punish Gelot for how he had treated Sachin Pilot during this last one term. And that has really, really hurt the Congress. Number two, who will be the chief minister now from uh, the BJP? Will it be Dia Kumari, who is uh, the princess of uh, Jaipur? Or will it be Vasundara Raje, who had been sidelined through this entire uh, campaign? Or will it be a new person? Of course, the BJP uh, will keep everyone guessing. Number three, the big, uh, you know, real campaign was polarizing. It was communal. It divided between Hindu and Muslim. It brought up the Kanaya Lal murder. And that really seems to have worked in the favor of the BJP. Let's take a look at the second state. And this is Madhya Pradesh. Now, Madhya Pradesh is a massive state because it sends out 29 seats to the Lok Sabha elections next year. Now, uh, in Madhya Pradesh, a win for the BJP, but a win of epic proportions that no one expected. 162 seats for the BJP, the Congress coming in at 65. Again, here are the three big takeaways. The big winner here is Shivraj Singh Chauhan, or Mamaji, as he is known. He was sidelined uh, by the BJP, uh, you know, national heads, but he continued to fight on the ground and he has won this election and brought it home. And his connect with the people of Madhya Pradesh is really extremely strong. So he sort of cemented himself um, as chief minister, at least until the Lok Sabha elections are over, because the BJP is unlikely to make any disruptive change before the Lok Sabha elections, given that he's such a popular uh, chief minister. So Sivar Singh Chauhan is likely to be the chief minister. Second point, the Ladli Behena scheme that Shivraj Singh uh, Chauhan announced, which basically said it will give 12 million women in the state a thousand rupees every month that will go up to 3,000 rupees in the second term, is largely being credited for his victory because the women voters voted him back. So that is something to watch out for. Remember, the BJP has also criticized what they call freebies or guarantees or the ravery culture. But in this case, this particular scheme is what is being given all of the credit. And number three, the arrogance of the Congress party between Kamal Nath and Digvijay Singh in Madhya Pradesh. We understand the two of them not getting along either. The fact that they lost a talent like Sindhya during the course of the last term in 2020, were not able to retain him, lost him to the BJP. Apparently, his vote has gone to the BJP as well. And the fact that they have not been able to build any cadre really or any youth uh, leaders has shown that they're completely not in touch with the ground at this point. Uh, the, the high command not being able to actually manage that situation has led to this problem. Let's take a look at the next stage, which is Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh is a massive surprise. If we look at the numbers here, the BJP winning Chhattisgarh with 53 seats, the Congress at 34 seats, anti-incumbency for the Congress. They thought it had Chhattisgarh in the bag. Apparently, the sweets were being delivered to their offices before the results had even come out. And the BJP leaders from Chhattisgarh were hoping for something good, but nobody expected something like this. The big takeaways from Chhattisgarh were that the exit polls were wrong by saying that the Congress would have an advantage in Chhattisgarh, which it did not. It was looking very close in the middle of the day, but BJP running away with that state. Number two, anti-incumbency. Now, remember, in Madhya Pradesh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan has defended a four-year term. So anti-incumbency of 20 years for the BJP, and he's now got a fifth term. In this case, in Chhattisgarh, 
anti incumbency of five years, one term, they were not able to defend. And um, the number three point, of course, Chhattisgarh election had no CM face at all. It had no local leader. It had the prime minister who campaigned um, and the prime minister who gave what they call um, Modi ki guarantee, saying that this is what I'm going to deliver. But there was no CM face. So we don't know who's going to be made the CM of Chhattisgarh. But the BJP winning a victory that maybe some of their leaders also did not expect would happen. So the Congress really has to sit down and introspect. Now, finally, the state of Telangana. The state of Telangana Congress did win. Congress got 66 seats, while the BRS, uh, KCR's BRS, which has been sort of uh, the, forming the government in Telangana since it was created, BRS got 39 seats, so BJP got 9. Now, here's the thing, which it seems like good news for uh, Congress, but it's not. So here are the three takeaways for Telangana. One, everyone is saying that this was a vote against uh, KCR and against the BRS because there was a lot of anti-incumbency and complaints about corruption. And their one family was ruling the state. So it's not really for Congress, but it was actually against, um, you know, KCR and the TRS. Number two, this means that there is no BJP in the South at all. That all the southern states are being run by non-BJP parties. And in two of those places, in Karnataka and in Telangana, there is the Congress. And finally, um, you know, for the Congress party itself, this particular win will actually put it at loggerheads with its own alliance partners inside the India Alliance. Because what it has done is moved out a regional party and taken its place. And uh, this would actually mean that when the India Alliance sits down to have a conversation, which Malik Arjun Karge has already called, that there will be an interesting conversation. Now, let's take a look at the main takeaways for 2024. One, this weakens the India bloc or the India Alliance tremendously. The Congress party right now only has three governments in Telangana, in Karnataka and in Himachal. So it's become much, much weaker than it thought. These were all states, remember, that it could have won. Now, in conversations with the India bloc, uh, people like Mamta Banerjee, uh, Arvind Kejriwal, Akhilesh Yadav, with which the Congress was already having some problems, are going to become more vocal. The Congress is going to have to actually sit and listen to its alliance partners and be open to seat sharing. That would mean negotiations would become even more difficult. So it does uh, drastically weaken the India alliance. It makes the BJP stronger. I'll tell you why, because you could argue that, hey, what about the South? But the states that it has won, which is Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, uh, would mean a lot of Lok Sabha seats being sent into Lok Sabha. And these are important. The BJP sort of really digging in and holding on to the Hindi heartland where those large number of seats are coming from. Remember, Uttar Pradesh is already very strongly with the BJP. There is a Ram Mandir inauguration. The consecration of it will be in January, timed very well before the upcoming um, elections. The campaign led by the prime minister in these states seems to have paid off, which means that his popularity is as strong as ever, that his promises are something that are still connecting with the people. And also the Congress party will need to really introspect because it does seem like the high command is not able to get its ducks in a row and to prevent the infighting that's happening within its party, both in Madhya Pradesh and its Rajasthan. It was the infighting that has really costed them both of those governments that could have just as easily been theirs, but they haven't been able to put their th stuff together. Also, it does seem like they're sort of aging leaders. Remember at this point, Kamal Nath, Digvijay Singh, um, also uh, Ashok Gelot, they're nearly 80. They're not able to really connect with the people on the ground. It does show that the Congress is not willing to make a change and bring in new faces and trust younger people with power and with responsibility. And that seems to be hurting it as well. So those are the big uh, sort of takeaways from this election. And from the election results, stay tuned to Beetroot News for more news and updates. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe.